Then you're building a SaaS application, adding payments, subscription management, billing, permissions, and feature flags into your user management system can become complex. Oftentimes, these providers are separate from one another. You might use Clerk for user management and authentication and Stripe for billing and subscription management. This usually means you need to sync and link these different resources together using webhooks that can become tedious. And that's why we build Clerk Subscription Billing, which is the easiest way to implement subscriptions for B2B or B2C applications right inside of your user management system. You can define and manage plans directly inside your Clerk dashboard and use Clerk's UI drop-in components like pricing table and checkout to allow users to subscribe to your plans. This way, your user data and subscription data lives in one place and you don't have to sync and link any external resources using webhooks. You can use the has function or the protect component to check for a specific feature or a specific plan. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through Clerk Billing by building two demo apps. We're going to start from a B2C application where you would charge individual users. And then we're going to continue with a B2B example where your customers are going to be organizations and companies using the organization management or feature in Clark. So let's get started. There will be timestamps down in the video description so you can jump around as needed. Let's go ahead and create our first application. We're going to start from a B2C example where we're going to charge individual users. The onboarding step here walks you through connecting this Clerk instance or app to your Next.js app. So let's just start by creating an Next.js app. I have a template here that we're going to use. There's a link in the description. You can also use this as a template or clone it down in your own repository. So let's go git clone. And then I'm going to name this Clerk Billing. Let's see it into Clerk Billing and open this up in our VS Code. Let's also install all the dependencies by running pmpmi. Now going back to the next step, we need to install Clerk Next.js. Well, we already had this inside of our repo. If you're starting off from a different repo, you can install it, but the template that I used already has Clerk Next.js. All I need to do is really to bring my environment variables. I also have the middleware there. I'm going to show, you, show it to you in a second and the layout. So let's go back to our app and actually create a .env.local. And as I mentioned, this is already wrapped with Clerk. So inside of our layout, we can see it's already wrapped with the Clerk provider. I've already added the middleware, which is protecting a dashboard page. So by default, we have this dashboard page. Let's actually run this so we can see this in, in action, PMPF dev. It's gonna take us to localhost 3000. Let's open this up and see what we get out of the box. So this is a template that you can just start off Next.js, Clerk, and ChatCN. It shows off this dashboard page where it is going to force you to sign in. Now the project comes with a built-in sign-in page as well, but to instruct Clerk to use it, we actually need to add another environment variable here, which is called next public sign-in URL. And now if I go back and try to go to the dashboard, it takes me to my own sign-in page, which is hosted inside of my own app. So I go ahead and try to sign in using my Google account. I'd be able to log into this application. And from there, I should be able to go to the dashboard page and see my user information, which is nice. So going back to the application, now I should be able to see this user down here. Now, so far we have implemented user authentication into our Next.js application. Now let's look into subscription and billing. So up there, there is a tab that you can go and get started. And the first thing that you need to do to enable your subscription and billing is to create a plan. By default, you're going to get started off a free plan and you can then add on top of this any other features and plans that you wanna provide. So let's go ahead and create our first plan. We're going to name this starter Description is our starter plan. We're going to say this is 20 bucks a month. You can provide an annual discount. If somebody subscribes annually, let's say it's 15. We have recently released a free trial version, so you can also enable this and give them a free trial that is going to increase your conversion rate. And you can also add features. So what does the user get when they subscribe to this plan? So let's add a feature here. Let's say they're going to get a user dashboard. So user dashboard. 
Now you can decide if this is publicly available or not. If it is, it's going to show up on the pricing table. I'm going to show you show this to you in a second. You can create this feature and now you can save up this plan. So we created our first plan. If I go back to my plans, I can see now I have this as starter. Now we're going to see the features or how it looks like inside of a pricing table. But before that, let's enable billing inside of our application. This is going to allow us to use the drop-in pricing table and check out and the authorization methods inside of our app to check for subscription. So let's go to the read billing guide. Over here, we have a guide for B2B or B2C SaaS applications. Let's go ahead with B2C. It is going to take you through the same explanation that I'm walking you through here, but you can also reference that. There's a link in the description as well. Now we can use the pricing table as a component anywhere, but you can also have your dedicated pricing page. So let's create a pricing page. Let's go back to our application under the app. I'm going to create a new pricing page and let's create our component. Let's call this pricing page. Now down here, let's add our pricing table. Let's also get rid of this import here, save it up. And if I go back to my application and visit the pricing page, we have the free plan, which everybody starts off with, and the starter plan we just created. It's $15 a month if paid annually. We can turn this off, 20 bucks a month. And the user dashboard is the feature that we added to this plan is now visible. We also have the seven day free trial here so they can start it off without having to pay to use our product. So that's the first step to implement billing inside of our app. Now let's go back to our user dashboard page and actually change this so only people who are subscribed to our products or a starter plan in this case can access the dashboard page. Right now, the only thing we are showing in the dashboard page is the user detail. So let's remove this and implement some authorization. So we want to check and see if the user is on a paid plan. We're going to use the has function return from the auth object that we imported from our clerk Next.js package. Now with the has function, you can check for roles and permissions to implement RBAC, or you can check for plans and features to implement subscriptions and billings. Right now we have only one plan, so we're checking to see if the user has a starter plan. Now down here, if they are on a paid plan, they're going to see the user details. If not, they're going to see an alert. And since I'm not subscribed to our starter plan, let's go back to our dashboard and see this in action. We get the alert that we need to upgrade our account. Let's go ahead and actually upgrade. We see the starter package that they just created. So let's go ahead and start the free trial. This is going to show the drop-in checkout component. And you can use this page with Test Guardian development to go ahead and test our subscription. Now, if I go back to the dashboard, because I'm subscribed to this plan, I can now see the dashboard. And that's how easy we were able to implement authorization based on a plan using the has function. Now, let's go back to our application and actually include another plan. Let's go to our subscription plans and create a new plan. I'm going to name this Pro. Let's say our Pro plan. Let's say this is monthly $40. If you pay annually, you would get this for 30 bucks. And let's say we have the seven day free trial similar to what we had there. Now, as far as the features, I can already add the user dashboard that we have in our available features tab, and I can create a new one. Let's say we want to get the pro plan users more widgets. So we call this widgets and then create feature. This didn't quite reflect the available feature that we had here. So let me click on that as well and apply feature. And now go ahead and save this up. Now, if I go back to our plans, we can see that we have this pro plan as well. If I go back to my application now and go to our pricing page, have this pro plan added with the defined features inside of it. Now, the user can go ahead and switch this plan from here, but I also want to show you that this is accessible under the user profile component as well. Now that we have enabled billing, we have this billing tab in the user profile. Somebody can come in here and access statements, payments, and see their current plan. They can also go ahead and switch plans, and now they can see that switch plan. Now, let's say they want to switch to this plan. If you're upgrading to a higher tier, it happens immediately. If you're on a higher tier and want to downgrade to a lower tier, it happens at the end of that cycle so that you're going to get what you paid for for that cycle and then downgrade after that finishes. So let's go ahead and switch to this plan. I'm going to go ahead and pay 
with the payment method stored on my account over here. And now the payment was successful and I'm actively on the pro plan. So if I close this up and go back to the dashboard, I still see that I don't see this even though I'm on a higher tier. Well, the reason why is here, if you're only checking if the user is on the starter plan, one way is to also add our pro plan over here. If I do this and go back, now we have the dashboard page. While this works, the better recommended way is to be granular in your feature flags and actually check for the specific feature you're granting access in this specific component. And for that, what we can do is to check for the feature. And the feature that we're checking for is user dashboard. So let's go ahead and say user dashboard. And now regardless of what plan they're on, if they have access to this user dashboard, they'd be able to see this user dashboard page. Let's take this even further. I want to show you a B2B example as well. So let's go back to our clerk application and I'm going to create a new application and we're going to call this B2B building. Let's go ahead and create. And since we've already gone through these steps and set up our application, all I need to do really is to just copy my new credentials. Let's, let me close all of this. So we're going to copy our new credentials into our .env, which is going to connect us now to that new clerk instance. And let's close this up. Now, if I go back and refresh our application, we shouldn't see the dashboard page and we're not logged in because now this is a totally different instance of Clerk and we don't have any users over here. Now, I want to go ahead and enable organizations. If you're not familiar with this feature in Clerk, there is a dedicated video linked in the description, also up in the cart where I walk through Clerk organizations, features, roles, permissions, access controls, and whatnot. So definitely watch that. Let's go ahead and enable organizations. Now, there is a pop-up here that asks you whether or not you want to allow personal accounts. Now imagine inside of an organization or inside of your app, if a user can have a personal account, sometimes you have this feature. Let's say in GitHub, you can have a personal account, but you can also create workspaces and teams and then treat that as a team or as an org. Now it's up to you if you want to allow this or not, they can allow it so users can log in using their own account or they'll be forced to create an organization before they can use our app. So we're going to allow personal accounts for now, and I'm going to enable this. This is going to take me to the organization management page where I get default roles and permissions. Again, check that video if you want to learn what these options are. And now we can use the organization switcher component to bring in some organization management to our app. So I'm going to go to the header component. When the user is logged in, I'm going to add the organization switcher component to my app. Now, if I go back to my app and refresh the page, nothing happens because I need to be signed in. So let's go ahead and sign in. Now I'm logged in. And as you can see up top there, besides my user button and user profile, I have this organization switcher component that allows me to create orgs and switch between my personal account, personal space, or my team. Now, before I go ahead and create an org, let's go back to our clerk. And now I want to enable subscriptions again, getting started. We need to create our plan. But because I have orgs enabled in my instance, I now have the option to create organization plans or user plans. Again, if you're allowing users to have personal spaces inside of your app, maybe you want to have separate user plans versus organization plans. So let's go ahead and create our first plan. We're going to name it the same thing that we named it before. So a starter plan, our starter plan, and go ahead with a feature. And the feature would be user dashboard. Let's go ahead and create a plan and save this up. All right, let's go ahead and enable billing. And let's go to our app and let's go ahead and check our pricing page. Now, our pricing page doesn't quite show the plan we created. And that's because we need to go back to our pricing table component and specify that we want to bring in the plans for organizations. Again, as a reminder, you can create plans for individual users. That would be a B2C business model or organizations, which is a B2B business model. Now, going back to our app, 
I can see the starter plan already showing up here. It's the $65 a month plan and has the access to the user dashboard, but I cannot go ahead and subscribe because this is only for organizations. And right now I'm in my personal account. So let's go ahead and create an organization. We're going to name our org clerk and then create the org. This is going to allow me to also invite another member. So I'm going to invite a member over here and send the invitation. You can also check which role you want to assign to this specific user you're inviting. So I'm going to leave the member over here and send the invitation and then finish setting up. Now I'm going to be inside of Clerk now, but now if I go ahead and for slash pricing, I should be able to go ahead and subscribe to this. I can also access this through my organization manager that gives me access to the same plans over here to subscribe or I can access it through the pricing page now. Let's go ahead and subscribe to this. Pay with test card. Go ahead and continue now inside of our dashboard. Because I'm a member of an org that subscribed to a paid plan, I can already see all of my information. Now going back to our dashboard page, as a reminder, we're only checking for this specific feature. So it doesn't matter if it's a user plan, if it's an organization plan, as long as it has this feature, it has access to this page. The more granular the feature flags, the more maintainable your code base is going to be. Now, similarly, the user we invited to join our organization should have access to this feature as well. By default, when you invite a new member, they're going to receive an email. So we're going to click on the email, accept the invitation, and that's how we can join this organization. Let's go ahead and sign into our application. I'm now logged in and automatically joined inside of our clerk organization. So now if I go ahead and go to the dashboard, because I'm a member of this org and this org is already a subscriber to the starter plan and the starter plan has the feature, I can access this page and that brings our B2B business model implementation full circle. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. We implemented payment, subscriptions, billing, permissions, and feature flags in our SaaS application using Clerk Billing. If you have any questions, like always, hit them down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.